Hello and welcome to the Fleeting Thoughts Podcast brought to you by KSRBX, supported by nothing and ready for everyone. Colonel what? Chunky's anal cream. <laughs> <laughs> Carnal? <laughs> Carnal Colonel? Ch- Colonel? Colonel Chunky's anal cream. Fleeting Thoughts brought to you by Colonel Chunky's anal cream. When them chunky bits can't get out your anus, <laughs> lube it up with Colonel Chunky's anal cream. <laughs> Colonel Chunky, <laughs> the chunkiest chunky anal cream you can get. It's chunky, but doesn't feel like it. It's got uh, rice beads in it to help. I don't know if that's <laughs> rice beads? Some, yeah. uh, they dissolve instantly. <laughs> um, rice beads? <laughs> they bloat when you put them in water and eat. <laughs> yeah, like those uh, um, those uh, little things that you put in the water and then they get bigger. They... They grow oh, in yeah. water or whatever. We They're saw like some of those. You can somewhere. like uh, grow a girlfriend. Oh, really? It's just like a little figure, and you put it in water. I think it and grows it like six times its size. Yeah, which is still so not long. big enough for me to fuck. No. <laughs> you have to put it in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes. It gets to be like five foot seven. <laughs> You're like, oh shit, this sponge is huge. And then you get. You probably got to cut a hole into it. I don't think they have proper orifices. Uh, for what you're wanting to do I'll make it work I'll put a coat I'll fucking cut a hole in wherever I need <laughs> I always want to have holes. sex in somebody's thigh Just for fun Yeah Or in their What? <laughs> you want to? Weird, weird spot that you could put a hole you might, Yeah Do you just, just fantasize about Fucking like right under the left nipple mm-hmm. Right like right where a right normal under person's the left rib nipple. cage Not under be. the boob Under the nipple Yeah So like in the, the boob itself yeah. Well, that's the difference. I don't know. That's like guys. <laughs> guys don't give a shit. Like I don't care. Just I'm just gonna put it in there, and if it, it feels good, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> gonna feel good. I don't care if it's a rock <laughs> or the rock. Ooh, yeah, the Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Johnson, which is another word for dicks. It is. Welcome to a Fleeting Thoughts podcast, brought to you by. The <laughs> Sorry. Uh keep working on my <laughs> intro it's not very good um how are you doing channing you're a person right i am last i checked yeah how do you check on that one um you i just, just ask myself i look in the mirror and i'm like are you a person mm-hmm. are you okay. a real boy real boy and then i blink a couple of times and i spin three times and <laughs> i look back in the mirror and you yes and you go fabulous <laughs> And you go, it's fucking hot outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fabulous. Um, and you go, I think, therefore, I am a person. Because yes. that's how we know we're Is alive. that how? That's how think? we know and we are real. I oh, am real. yes. Um, but yeah, I'm good. How are you? I, I uh, You had the day off. I did not. I worked. Yeah, I had the day off. It was lovely. Lovely. Did you get a lot done? How time did you get up? Mm. One forty-seven is my guess. Nope. It was 12.30 on the dot, and uh, I tried to get up at 11.30, but that didn't... Did I say try? I meant didn't try at all, but (laughs) I did wake up at 11.30 and then went back to bed till 12.30, and then I got up, and I was super productive. I paid all my bills. I paid... uh, um, I didn't even have to pay my, um, my electricity bill. I guess I had already... I'm like way ahead of the game on that one. I had to create and a checklist for my bills so I can keep yeah. track of <laughs> which ones I've paid and which ones I haven't. Yeah. I got all my bills paid and I uh, went to the store, went shopping, and then I went on a bike ride for like an hour or so. And then I came back and did uh, some crunches and a ton of pull-ups. Uh, and then I I bought some pull-ups from my butt because I'm a big kid now. Yeah, you know, well, I'm not here to judge. We all got problems. Do you have like a... Hesitated colon, like <laughs> butter's does. You just, sometimes you can't control your sphincter. Uh, yeah. Like right now, I'm gonna fart. <laughs> I can tell. Like you're kind of like <clears throat> wiggling around I'm in your chair on my, there. My my anal kegels, just you know, getting that pelvic floor all strong and ready to. I get it ripped, so that when the proctologist looks in there, they're like, "Damn, that's swole." I th- like not th- swole. Assume in, you wanted to like pinch their finger off when they're trying to give you a. Yeah, Pulling that's out. the idea. Okay. Is like that first time when I turn forty and I have to go get my, uh, my uh, prostate. What is it? My prostate checked. Mm-hmm. Whatever the thing is in my butt, <laughs> that's so important. Why? If we were made by God, why did He make such an important thing right inside your butt and so susceptible to cancer? I don't yeah. really get it. Yeah, 
I don't know. Um, and how have we not designed uh, medical equipment that just negates the need for a doctor to shove their finger up our ass? I'm pretty sure they could just look in a machine and just tell. Uh, no, I, I don't. Well, yeah, fucking they should. It's I don't just know. Just checking to see if it's swelled up. So why can't you yeah. just, why isn't there not a machine? Maybe where there's a conspiracy where doctors were like, they've, um, they've held back all the research on <laughs> uh, other methods so that they can it's continue. It's not that important. To, uh, we want to keep putting our fingers in people's butts. That's like our biggest thing. It's we why do. I became a doctor. Yeah. Why do you think I'm here right now? It's the only place I can go where it's not weird. I'm not a homosexual either, yeah. and so there's no other place for me to go. Is it weird that the doctor puts candles on, l- lowers the lights, and then <laughs> yeah. plays Barry Manilow music <laughs> <laughs> when he checks my prostate? I'm I I that sounds scary. Like you know, the first time you go get your prostate checked, you, what if they say you have fucking prostate cancer? I know. First, you have to go through the the humiliation of. Pulling your pants down and having another man mm-hmm. inject his finger into your anal cavity. Ooh, I don't like the word inject. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to pick really colorful words <laughs> yeah. for this You're scenario. You're colorful. Um, but then, like, after you suffer through all that, then he's like, sorry, bro, you're positive. <laughs> you're positive. Sorry, bro. <laughs> sorry. I'm the most fucking unprofessional doctor ever, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got that cancer up in the butthole. Uh, <laughs> it's not in your butthole per se. I just have to get through your butthole. Yeah. Uh, it's like adjacent, but butthole your prostate's adjacent. It's like uh, it's like the opposite of a raisin. You know, it's not all shriveled up. It's like bloated. <laughs> yeah, it's hard as a fucking rock. Uh, probably just got a bunch of tumors and shit in there. <laughs> but uh, don't worry, we'll cut it out. And then you won't be a man no more. Cause <laughs> you can't make the semen's. Oh, is that what prostate? I thought you were, <laughs> I don't your, know, balls just... make prost- your balls make prostate. Your balls make sperm. Your prostate balls, is your like balls a make gland. Prostate. <laughs> your balls are prostate. My ball. Could you feel my balls? <laughs> <laughs> I, how do I know those aren't messed up? I don't know. That's the other procedure. They have to yeah. cup your balls and make you cough. Yeah, I've only had that happen once to check to see if you have a hernia or whatever. But uh, I don't think I had a hernia at the time. But I haven't had that done in a long time. I haven't gone to the doctor in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a whole mm. uh, rainbow of exams that are going to need to be done whenever I uh, have to go. A plethora? Maybe I'll just die before. That's well, my goal. if you never go to the doctor, you'll, you'll die, die before yeah, you, yeah, go you go to the doctor. Yeah. Cool. Don't worry about it. You're fine. And uh, plethora was a better word, but rainbow just sounded gayer. more pleasant. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> a lot gayer. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, my. You got an assortment <laughs> of exams yeah. to get done today. You know, someone's ready for their prostate uh, exam when they have um, uh, either crotchless <laughs> or like uh, rip away pants <laughs> that they bring to the doctor so that when the doctor's like, okay, let's do this. Just drop your trousers. <laughs> and let's do this. All right. Hello. Cereal. <laughs> uh, it's a breakfast food. <laughs> The yes. gayest breakfast food is cereal. <laughs> anyway. I was trying to think of one that might sound gay. Just like bagels and cream <laughs> cheese. <laughs> they all sound gay when you do it like that. I'm bacon and eggs. That's what More I'm of a steak and eggs kind of guy. <laughs> steak and eggs because I like that meat and that beef and that, that hard rock <laughs> dick. The big bone, <laughs> the bone in and my yeah. palm rib. <laughs> I like that bone in ham. I like the stick my bone in a ham ham bone pork sausage links <laughs> pork sausage links I could get with patties uh. but I'm just more into the links myself <laughs> hell yeah! I like my finger food hell yes that's fine I like that <laughs> breakfast is <laughs> it's southern gay southern gay <laughs> I like them grits and what are they eating <laughs> it's like uh, corned beef and hash yeah. is like a big thing right I eat that corned beef and hash, <laughs> and then sometimes I smoke hash, and then sometimes I eat it, and then sometimes <laughs> I beat it. it. I eat it and I beat it. It's hash. Mm-hmm. Last time I had corned beef and hash, I got violently sick because I didn't cook it all the way. <laughs> oh. Lesson learned. I didn't. I don't. Yeah, that's not good. You got to cook that shit. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I cooked it. I just didn't cook it enough. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, it's yeah. like it, it's hard to tell when it's done because it's not like really a different color. Yeah. <laughs> You're done cooking it, you know? Oh, wait, this shit brown <laughs> stuff is still, still shit, shit brown. brown yep. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just eat it. <laughs> Fuck it. I can smell it. Like shit. it smells like it's done. It smells fine. I don't care. Um, no, I, I used to love corned beef and hash when I was a kid. And then mm. I like my mom bought me some and I just cooked it and uh, not well enough. And yeah. I have not had it since. Have you ever had collard greens? 
I no, I have not. I don't think so. Mm, that's another southern uh, dish that's actually pretty good. Is that where you like take your broccoli and put like a little collared shirt on it? Like yeah, your collared green, and then you you take your it's like yeah. a little polo shirt. Mm-hmm. What? Collar, mm-hmm. yeah, you p- or you just put a collar on it with a little little string, and then you let's take it for a take walk. it for a walk, <laughs> and then you, and you bring it back it when and cook you're done. it. Yeah, oh, I got that collard grains. Gotta ferment that shit outside. Mm-hmm. Drag mm-hmm. it through the dirt a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's like walking a cat, but broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> but it's inanimate. It's different. And pretty dead. Is it inanimate? Yes. Okay, I would assume so. Yeah, your cat true. would probably be fairly animated if you were dragging it along. Are are plants inanimate? When I guess when they're dead, they are. Like yeah. when you cut the stalk so off. I mean, the them. broccoli is is going to be dead. It's not attached to what made it grow. Yeah, I just never thought about my salads being dead. <laughs> but I guess the meat's dead, like the chicken. Yeah, it's definitely not living. No. <laughs> <laughs> This is a great conversation so <laughs> far. What have we talked about? Let's uh, recap. Prostate cancer. Welcome to Fleety Thoughts <laughs> Podcast, where we talk about anal rape and anal warts and uh, gay food. If you could just say sodomy, it would just be much more. Uh, sodomy. <laughs> uh, sodomy. High. Sodomy just sounds like a dirty word. Like, it sounded dirty to me before I even knew what it meant. It just yeah. doesn't sound like a word that would be pleasant. Um. Could yeah. you imagine if that was like the name of a food? Like you're at a restaurant mm-hmm. and I'll take like, the sodomy, please. I want the <laughs> sodomy uh uh medium rare actually yeah. on the sodomy. Can you, yeah. <laughs> can you uh can we, can you make it a little less bloody? <laughs> <laughs> the sodomy uh do you want that uh uh little pink inside? <laughs> it's always a little pink inside. <laughs> it's best when it's juicy and pink inside, mm-hmm. just a little bit. Though. Yeah, it's weird because it's I can't what came first, the sodom and gomorrah or sodomy? You know, like the know. chicken or the egg. Was it sodomy or Sodom and Gomorrah? Because that's where the word comes from, right? Because the people from Sodom uh, were fucking each other in the butts because they were, you know. Um, I don't know that much what about Sodom and Gomorrah. So. Uh, pagans or whatever. Oh. And that's why God smote them. God, why is butt sex so evil? I don't get it. Because it doesn't lead to babies oh, okay. and more people you can indoctrinate into your uh, fucking fascist religion. So some things are just considered universally wrong and evil, and butt sex is one. I think it's it's less frowned upon now. Uh, well, it depends on what culture, and if you yeah. go to fucking Muslim town in Muslim Amer- wherever that is, I don't know <laughs> Muslim that is. town. I'm pretty sure they're still against it. Uh, and most religions, you know, yeah. like uh, Abrahamic religions, are still against. It. I don't know what Buddhism, 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 <laughs> Buddhism. It's the uh, <laughs> Buddhism, dum dum. Uh, Buddhists. I wonder what their uh, stance is on Sodomy. anal sex. Well, um, I guess they're probably against it because they're against general desires, like because yeah, pain just... comes from desiring things, and so you're trying to not. Trying to get rid of your ego and your own pleasures, I guess. I don't know what the fuck they. Yeah, do. I just want to have no feelings. And, yeah, uh, yeah. No I'd like enjoyment. to deny. I'd like to deny everything that makes me human <laughs> and uh, pretend I'm kind of like a, a fucking <laughs> ethereal I'm just a little robot. Bit better than everybody else because I've elevated myself yeah. beyond the I've, simple pleasures I've of life. I've gone to a new new plane <laughs> where uh, I fucking don't think. I just wear these orange robes and sit in this Tibetan mountain yeah. and just uh, <laughs> and sort of stare <laughs> off like a fucking idiot. Do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, what other religions are have issues? I feel like that was like the a very uh, just one sided <laughs> outlook on Buddhism. We're just we just, made fun uh, of just them. generalized the shit out of that. Uh, yeah, I'm not here to judge, but uh, they're like shitty. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, uh, the worst. No, Buddhism's better than most of the religions. It's more of a philosophy <laughs> of nothingness, <laughs> which isn't anything. So I don't know what they're talking about. Um, yeah, man. all those feelings and emotions, just turn them off. Yeah. Hey, just don't have them anymore. Sick of being sad? Just don't be. <laughs> just stop. But don't be happy either. Just be neutral. Don't jump to the other end of the plane. Yeah. D- just just woo-saw. Just breathe in, woo-saw. breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Stop breathing. Wait, breathe hard. Breathe fast. Brave heart. But don't <laughs> breathe hard if it's going to hurt your lungs because you can't be in pain. No, but don't desire air. 
You don't want to live on air. It's like in uh, Mad Max where he's like, do not covet the water, for when you do not have it, you will resent it. It's like, yeah, guy controlling the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guy is <laughs> denying us like one of the yeah, baser things that you yeah. need to like exist. The necessity of life. The bare necessities of life. That's it. Uh, Anyway, yeah. Well, um, I was gonna speaking of Mad bungalow, Max, bungalow, bungalow, bungalow. What was that guy name? Oh, uh, b- Baloo. Babaloo, Baloo. 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 balloon, 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 balloon without the N, if you will. Did you like Mad Max? We just watched that. You just brought it up. I Welcome to Fleeting <laughs> Thoughts Podcast, uh, home of the. You like a, you like an Android who just resets every five <laughs> minutes to back to that. Yeah, it has been almost every five minutes actually. <laughs> um, yeah, Mad Max. Let's two kaboot it. Uh, it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, my personal take on it is, it's one of the most enthralling, exciting movies where you're just kind of like, what the fuck is going to happen next yeah. the whole time? It really, really, uh, it was just a lot of fun and like a visual spectacle. Just every shot is like fucking bright and like interesting and detailed and really fucking like, it's so, it, they did such a good job with like, like just creating this other world, you know, mm-hmm. where like all the details of the the dirty people and their what they're wearing and it's very like, like there's no, it's not campy or anything in any way. Mm-hmm. Like it's very, uh, I don't know, very brutal. Well, I like that they don't try to uh, explain that much. Like there's a little bit of like uh, narration in the beginning from Max where he's just like, oh, yeah, war and like, the, but then like you just get submerged in this whole culture where like sitting in a movie theater watching, you're like these people are insane. Like mm-hmm. they are all fucking crazy yeah like that movie i just tell people when they ask me about it, i'm like it's like the most insane movie i've ever seen like it's up there with just all the characters are crazy even like the protagonists are just a little nuts which makes sense because they're all like living in this fucking hellhole of a world where yeah. you just kind of have to be crazy but then they're like they you know they have like this weird almost viking like worship where they're talking about going to valhalla yeah but then they're like worshiping vehicles and fuel and mm-hmm. um and i like that they didn't like try to stop and explain why or any of it you just like they're, they're just doing it and you're just like oh okay they just apparently believe that this is a thing so that's yeah. cool um but it was like it, there was almost there's very little dialogue which the other mad max movies the older ones are like that there's not a lot of dialogue it's all you're just kind of along for this ride um and i like that the whole movie was almost just like a giant chase scene like mm-hmm. there's like brief moments of reprieve for them but for like 90 percent of the movie they're just on the run it's like a there and back again type thing where they're just like uh, eh, now we gotta go back <laughs> like hobbit mm-hmm yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I liked is that it wasn't um it wasn't like a lot of movies that tried to explain too much mm-hmm. or or sit there and, you know, hold your hand through the story or whatever. It's just like you're just dropped into the center of this fucking crazy insane world that has developed for a long time and they have their own culture and their own weird shit they do and um yeah, I liked uh I liked the interjection of uh the religious stuff like mm-hmm. that they were um um, and they had their own little mottos and like, uh, mm-hmm. what was it? Uh, witness me, yeah, witness which was me. really cool. It was very yeah. different. It was, it makes sense that they would be very bonded in their lunacy. You mm-hmm. like, they, they kind of have to be, um, cooperative, you know, in, you know, in their little groups. And so these, uh, what are they called? Uh, war boys mm-hmm. They They have their own thing going on and they fucking are very dedicated to, uh, what they're doing. And then it definitely adds, you know, a lot of the characters do, I guess just one of the war boys is the main character in the the movie, and he mm-hmm. changes yeah. throughout the thing. Uh, and uh, it's just, yeah, it's just a fucking not like I was like on the edge of my seat, literally like staring at the screen, like excited for what might happen next. Mm-hmm. And then there was the scene where uh, um, it just all the uh, the storm happens, and she gets away from people, and then there's just spoiler alert. There's these fucking like five like gorgeous models, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a wonderful juxtaposition from what you've seen for the beginning yeah, of the movie, which dirty, is dirty, gross, ugly, mutated yeah. people. Yeah, with these boils and, mm-hmm. and these gross teeth. And you can see why these girls would be sought after and why they'd be so important to somebody who's trying to, you know, maintain power and control and, and how they would be a commodity where youth and beauty would be a commodity in that mm-hmm. area because everything's so mutated and gross. And um, But they also were super brutal about the biology of it, like where, um, like... 
the baby dies or whatever mm-hmm. and they just kind of are super aloof about it like they're just like oh fuck it died you know and the guy's like i had a brother oh, mm-hmm. he was perfect it was just it's just so uh foreign you know just mm-hmm. like an alien world that you're yeah. you're into and they didn't pull any punches and it was very brutal but still very human and all that when i was thinking back on it it really wasn't like that gory like a lot, like tons of people die but it's never like in in your face like a lot of action movies mm-hmm. these days where like you'll see a dude's face like explode yeah and they're like very gory in the details of it there's not like that much and i was kind of surprised too that i never really felt like they sexualized those five women mm-hmm. that much like they kind of did when they were first introduced cuz he mm-hmm. like but i think they did that on purpose cuz i feel like max almost looked at it as a hallucination in a, in a sense because he hasn't seen anything like that and they're just all out with the water and mm-hmm. um and so, like, initially, and, and, like, when I first saw that scene, I was like, oh, man, I feel like this is going to be one of those movies where they're just, like, going to really sexualize them and have them scantily clad and, like, helpless. But yeah. then they they actually turn out to be, like, resourceful women, mm-hmm. and they never really, outside of, like, um, the main guy just trying to get them back because they're essentially his fucking breeding territory. Mm-hmm. Um like they don't sexualize them at all, which was nice. Like uh, action movies are so prone to doing that yeah. with like female characters. Instead of them just letting them be a character and a part of the story, they just turn into an object for mm-hmm. to draw in like younger men to watch the movie. Um, so I like that. And I actually was uh, I read an article about it the other day too. That was talking about how it, it was a movie that was like really brutal and visceral. But like knew when to hesitate and when to kind of pull back a little bit and not go when they could have easily just gone overboard with gore and violence and nudity mm-hmm. and like rape. And because yeah. the, like, it exists in a world where those things are commonplace, obviously, just from like what you see. But they don't show any of it. Like the most probably brutal thing is when he's like cutting that baby out of mm-hmm. um, the dead woman, which they don't even really show you that. You just catch very little glimpses of it. But I mean, other than that, it wasn't even like that violent of a movie. As far as gore goes, like I said, a lot of explosions, yeah. a lot of people die, but it's not like in your face. It's not like um, like do- like uh, Judge Dredd or yeah. like those other movies that really uh, like take the special effects to how bloody and gory can we be. Mm-hmm. Um, subtlety is very important in in movies because it, it it's like reading a book. You your imagination fill in, fills yeah. it in. Yeah, it, you know it's not like it's lost on the audience if you don't show it directly. But then you also get to kind of show. In not showing it directly, you show how powerful it is mm-hmm. because it's so powerful that you don't have to show it. You just you know it, and it's even more um, impactful that way. Like like um, uh, that's what I've been Hitchcock. Saying. You know, Hitchcock was the master of creating suspense through what he didn't show, mm-hmm. and that's something that gets lost in a lot of uh, a lot of movies nowadays or whatever. Yeah, so it's really good because you you don't have to necessarily show that, but um, yeah, it was just fun it was yeah. a fun movie the choreography was probably like some of the best i've ever seen too oh, like yeah. that little uh right after he he runs into them they have like that whole kind of long like fist fight scene where he's still like still chained to the passed mm-hmm. out guy yeah and it was like i was watching i was like this is a fucking like yeah. awesome choreography for this whole thing yeah and then just obviously with all the vehicle combat and chases and all that stuff too so um it's awesome i want to go watch it again actually i probably will probably in the next week or two i really want to go see it again it was a lot of fun i actually liked it more than like the avengers like it's probably almost my favorite movie of the year so far i can't really think of something yeah that i've seen in at least in theaters where i was like so impressed with it yeah it's the most unique movie i've watched in a long time Mm -hmm. where they didn't it I don't know. It just was a, a, all of its own, you know. Mm-hmm. It just stood a, apart from anything else that'll probably come out for a while. Well, and they plan to do. He already has like a script written for a second one, and they ha- he has like plans to do like a whole trilogy as long as they continue to do well financially. Because I I was reading that it's a fairly it was a pretty expensive movie to make. It was like a two hundred million dollar budget or something. Because they use almost all practical effects. There's very little CGI in that movie. It's all like real cars that they, these guys built. Unlike people were. Uh, uh, like kind of surprised that that guy with the flaming guitar, which is like the <laughs> the biggest waste of resources in the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was like all real. Like they really built that fucking thing, like a guitar that shot fire and had a guy playing it. And uh, it like none of it was yeah. computer animated or anything, which is really cool. I think that's why the movie was so good to like to me, because I'm always looking for realism. Mm-hmm. Like does if it, you know, if it looks, if there's something that breaks the, the, the you know makes you like you look at it and it, you go oh that's fake 
that just takes you out of the movie for like a split second. And mm-hmm. so when most of it is all real for the most part, then your mind doesn't sit there and, and try to, it you know, oh, this is a special effect, mm-hmm. you know, or blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, the it was pretty obvious. I, I didn't even think of any of it being CGI. Yeah. Like I, the whole movie, I'm just like, this looks awesome. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't look, none of the cars look like they were, you know, digitally rendered or anything. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, that definitely matters. And I think people uh, respond to that stuff more. Well, I think it, you, you, you kind of have a little bit more respect knowing that there's like people who like had to train and practice and choreograph yeah. and like do these things. Mm-hmm. Whereas you like the Avengers, a lot of the fight scenes that you can just, it just goes straight to CGI mm-hmm. and it's like a cool spectacle to watch. Mm-hmm. But it's more impressive to me when I know that they just had somebody actually doing all that and not just like a computer taken to effect at a certain point and just do everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a place for CGI, and it's for a movie like fucking Avengers, where, yeah. <laughs> where you have the whole, you can't heroes. do anything about yeah. it, and they're in a totally different world where physics doesn't exist, so... You know, in the same way. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not our universe, whereas Mad Max is just our universe in, uh, you know, a decayed state. Terrible so. scenario. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really terrible type situation. I guess there's a bunch of messages in it, like, about um, how we value young, pretty girls, you know, like, like, like overarching mm-hmm. morals and how we... Um, adhere to oil so much like and it's like this big oh it should be a wake-up call for people it's like i didn't care about any of that watching it no i just was yeah enjoying it seems like the spectacle of if you live in a desert oil is not like if there was post-apocalyptic times oil wouldn't be you wouldn't care about it. It, no. you, it wouldn't matter because what would matter is water and food. Mm-hmm. That's all you would care about and how you get water and food out of the ground or or like find a river or whatever. That's what would matter. Mm-hmm. So those people living out in the middle of nowhere, not the most realistic scenario, I think. I mean, the fact that they had water is why they mm-hmm. they live there, but, um, it, you know... I, don't, I guess they couldn't find anywhere else, and they kind of make the assumption that the whole earth is just covered in sand, but that's completely unfeasible physically. Yeah. Well, it I couldn't think they, happen. It's just Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just that uh, they, they end Australia. up in Australia. Yeah. 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 Is that where it was filmed? Yeah. It would make sense. Yeah. That's where the, uh, the original Mad Max films were done, too. Yeah. Um, I think well, the only thing sense. that bothered me was like the, the elder ladies, like halfway through the movie <laughs> that they run to, because they're like. How you were just saying the other people, it made sense because they had something that was pulling water up out of the ground so they could like sustain themselves in that giant fortress. But then you you find these old ladies later on that are they're just like in the middle of the desert. And I'm and I'm like, okay, I get that for like story's sake. They're the women that uh, Charlie Theron's character like grew up with and was taken from, and now she's trying to get back. Um, so I got that. But I, in my mind, I was like, how do they have gas to run the motorcycles? Mm-hmm. How are they alive? Like there's like almost no animals running around. There's no source of water. I think it would have been better because how they talk about it being this land of the green, right? Mm-hmm. I think that which turns into like this funky swamp land with these weird dudes on sticks walking around or whatever was going on there. Yeah. Um, but I, I wish that it would have it would have showed them maybe at like a small like mini oasis type situation. They would like explain yeah. like how they can kind of like how they have water and stuff. Cause yeah. I think that the idea that they were trying to portray is that they used the, the younger, more attractive woman to like lure other people in so they could take their stuff. But how often are people wandering around out there? Like never. Cause that's clearly like on the edge of like that salt land where there's just fucking nothing. So mm-hmm. why would people be venturing out that far? So that was like the only part of the movie that I thought yeah. was just kind of shaky and they could have easily like remedied it by just like, like I said, just having like a, an oasis or maybe like a cave system or something mm-hmm. that they were living in that like could help support them. But that's just me nitpicking the, that little bit there. But yeah. Those, it was all I could think things. about when they first run into him and like after they like establish themselves, it's like, wow, how are you guys living out here in the middle of nowhere? Where are you getting gas for your motorcycles? Yeah. I don't like that when they just have a kind of glaring, mm-hmm. um, like <laughs> flaw, like impractical or yeah. whatever. Well, like I said, I think that because they try to lure them, when they first meet him, I think that they did that just to put the idea in your mind that that's how they survive is by luring people in. And 
and then murdering him. Stuff. And then yeah. uh, that sort of suggests that they're no better than anybody else. <laughs> so what the fuck is the moral story there? You know, they're, I mean, I guess that's what you have to do. You just have to fucking steal and rob and kill Pretty everybody much, who yeah. shows up and steal all their equipment because people can't get along when that's going on, I guess. Nope. But, uh, yeah, it's a good movie. Definitely recommend it. Check it out. Yep. Watch it. Awesome. It's really good in the theater. 3D was great. Mm -hmm. I I didn't have any issues with that. No. Um, I don't think there's any much movies coming out other than that. Not really. I'm going to go see Poltergeist on Friday, probably. For Um, sure. Vanessa and I are big horror fans. I don't like the original Poltergeist, so I'm kind of, like, shaky. But Sam Rockwell's in it, so Mm -hmm. assume if you get a guy of, like, that caliber, it's probably got a decent script. Because usually actors, like will avoid things if the script sucks or i guess if he's hard up for money i don't really know what the last thing he was in but he's done some really good stuff yeah, like I moon and iron man <laughs> 2 i guess he did a pretty good job i don't know <laughs> sam rockwell's great yeah but, um, i was just trying to think of things weird movies in. yeah he's always kind of like a like he's never really a main character i feel like i feel like moon was like one of the first yeah. things i saw where he was the focal he was a main character. character in um the movie where he played a uh, assassin, where he was like a normal guy who became an assassin and had lived two lives with Drew Barrymore. Did you ever watch that movie? I don't think so. Um, I forget something. what it's called. It's based on a true story where a guy gets uh, propositioned by a CIA agent like in an alleyway, and this guy just convinces him to like go through the uh, CIA assassin training, and then he he's also a really successful... Um, a game show host like he created like the gong show and stuff hmm. like that these really crazy game shows in like the 70s but he was on the side um doing assassinations like in russia and paris and oh, stuff crazy. all under the guise of being this this uh, famous guy and it's based on true story but like like a memoir and it could have been you know made up or whatever mm-hmm. like it, well any you know. of those based on true story things are typically fabricated and uh, embellished a little bit yeah. to make it like, more exciting like the, to watch. Uh, the Chris Ryan fucking American sniper shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. oh, let's just take this guy's word for everything and fucking not worry about I it. I just don't even want to watch that movie. Oh, you haven't um, seen it? No. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to see it because I like Clint Eastwood and I like the movies that he does. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you went to the theater and saw it and then you didn't really like it and I was like, eh, we typically like the same stuff so I'm not that excited about it anymore. And then I, I feel like it's like all the controversy around it. I was just like, no, nah, I just don't want to watch it. Like, I just yeah. don't care. <laughs> don't want to give it any kind of credence mm, at yeah. all. Um, I didn't like it for both for both the like the message and how they portrayed it. Like, mm-hmm. I thought it was a poor military movie. Like, there you can make a military movie that's amazing, and I love really good military movies. Most of them are pretty good, mm-hmm. like Black Hawk Down, and I mean, there's fucking so many really good you know, military movies and this just fucking sucked. And then it also is a huge propaganda fest. So yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, that's what I heard is it was just all propaganda. It's all just it, to go. America's wonderful and it's blowing everybody up, but mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and then, uh, Mad Max is going to get a game, which I think is going to be awesome. Oh yeah. Um, similar to like, uh, shadow of Mordor meets mm-hmm. the rage or something like well, that. Well, it's made by Avalanche Studios, which did the Just, Just Cause, Cause games. Yeah. And so, but they're partnering with Warner Brothers, so they're using like a lot of assets from like the Batman Arkham games mm-hmm. and Shadow of Mordor. Like it has that same free flow combat system. Yeah. And so, I think it's going to be fucking awesome. I can't wait. Like uh, they posted that new like 4-minute trailer not that long ago that was like mm-hmm. detailing different aspects of the game and you get to build your own car and I'm just like, "Hell, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I love cars." Mhm. Um, on the side note about cars and Mad Max, I love the Interceptor, but that shit gets blown up in every fucking Mad Max movie, like right in the beginning. Yeah. Like the first Mad Max, he has it like at the end, and then in the beginning of the Road Warrior, he has it for like 15 minutes, and then it gets destroyed. And then they ha- he has the Interceptor in the beginning of Fury Road. I'm like, oh yeah, Interceptor. And then it just immediately gets taken from him. I'm just like, can they do a Mad Max movie where he just has the car the whole time? It's like this big iconic vehicle, right, in mm-hmm. cinema history. But it's never really on screen that much because it always gets destroyed immediately or taken from him. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Max can't have nice things. I know. He yeah. he just always gets stuck driving a shitty tanker for dumb people. That's his that's his like weird vicious life cycle that he has to live in every film. I was hoping he was gonna get it back at the end because that one guy is like driving it towards the end and I was like, Oh, he's gonna like hijack it back and then mm-hmm. he'll have like something to leave with at the end of the movie. Like I thought that was how it was gonna end. He was gonna like save them. 
get a bunch of supplies from them for helping them and then like get in his interceptor and just drive off. And we'll be like, where the fuck is he going? Because there's nowhere to go. <laughs> well, and in this one, he just like disappears into the crowd. I was like, what? Yeah. You wouldn't like take some shit with you, get like a car or something? Like if you're going to like wander off by yeah. yourself or have a plan. Uh, I don't know, bang Charlize Theron. Yeah, he could have obviously stayed. Because that would have been great. Because he's an attractive dude for the situation and times that they were living in. So He's, he's an attractive he's, dude anyway. No, I mean in general, but... Even in the movie, he was like the most attractive yeah. dude. He was like but they had didn't, hair they didn't, and teeth. They didn't. There was nothing sexual about the movie. At that's all. what I mean. Like, that's what I liked about it. But yeah. I was just, like, when he just fades away into the crowd at the end, I was like, "Well, uh, he's mad, man. He's fucking <laughs> crazy. He's having images of his dead people in his life the whole oh, time." Oh, I like that too. I was going to yeah, bring that up good. because the, his family dies at the, at the end of the first Mad Max, and then they talk about it at the beginning of the Road Warrior a little mm. bit. But they, then they don't allude to it anymore at all. Like, it just yeah. never happened. So I like the, in the new one that he kind of is like, it kind of haunts him a little bit. And it feeds into, like, his insanity of being out in this wasteland by himself all the time. So I like that aspect of it, too. Yep. And, of course, it, well, it had that godlike situation where it saved his life yep. at one point. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I liked uh, I liked that because it's Mad Max, and yet they don't really talk about him at all as mm-hmm. a character. So that is the way that they kind of make him the main. I don't think he's the main character. I think Charlize Theron is That's the main character. That's what a lot character. of people are saying. Cause she she's spends... the one that we care about. She has mm-hmm. the issue. She's He's just like a hired hand, like yeah. essentially. But really good, you know. But the whole thing was... Well, and he spends like 40 minutes of the movie essentially just bound up and not Mm -hmm. able to do anything. So, yeah, Yeah, definitely. I think it was more about her, but he just happened to be there. Yeah. Like, well, it's his story, but Mad Max isn't a talker. He's a fucking doer. Mm -hmm. And she had she was his, you know, he needed to help her. So, but uh, yeah, I definitely want to watch that right. Like right now. I know. Like uh, Vanessa and I keep talking about it and I'm just like, I want to just go watch it again. Yeah. Because it's, it's one of those movies that's just so exciting that you could just watch it over and over again because it's mm-hmm. just so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not too long. Yeah. And th- those are the kind of movies I always end up watching multiple times. So like the exciting like Dread I watch a lot. The Raid movies. Just movies that are just yeah. fucking cool and exciting and fun to watch. Like mystery movies are fun like once through but the big draw of those is like trying to just like piece the clues together and figure out what's going on same with like horror movies like they're they're fun once through but then i just kind of know where the jump scares are at you know what's going on like what makes things scary is like the unknown factor when you don't know what's going on it's scarier but the moment it gets explained it's just Mm -hmm. not that scary anymore so I think that's why action movies are just like they're so awesome because they're just exciting. And so the entertainment value is just always present. Yeah, yes. I agree. Uh, yep. You're you're right. <laughs> Am I? Good job. Just uh, yes. Again. Uh, Again. You, yes. You, uh, you uh, fucking nailed it. You got it right. Can I say it better myself? Um, why don't we? Welcome to the Fleeting Thoughts <laughs> podcast with Joe Grant, Johnny Cornwell, uh, where we define words, which is what we're going to do right now. Aww. It took you longer than five minutes to reset that time. I know, because we were talking about a good thing. I know. A good thing. As opposed to I the, do it a minute. The, the weird... minute I get bored, <laughs> I get bored and I just go, well, <laughs> go to the <laughs> middle, middle, middle. That way people are fast forwarding through. They keep thinking they're at the beginning of the. Yeah. Oh, I've been fast forwarding for like Wait, 20 minutes. How what? am I at the beginning again? Yeah. Nope. Sister, you're fucking with you. That's I'm all. fucking with you. You want me to go first? Are you going first? Who's no, going you first? go first. Right, I go would first? think I want you to go first. Mm. Okay. Well, my word for this week is legerity. Legerity. It's spelled L E G. E R I T Y. Legerity. Is it. I don't even know where to start with that one. It doesn't make any sense. It sounds like lethargy or something like that. Like lethargic. Being um, lethargic. Nah. It's no. a noun. I'll tell you that. Uh, what's a noun? Person, place, or thing? Mm-hmm. So is it a building? That's a place and a thing. Actually, it says it's a noun, but I feel like by reading the definition, it almost seems more like an adjective. But. Hmm. Anyway, legerity means physical or mental quickness, nimbleness or agility. That's not a noun. I know, right? Like it says it's a noun, but I, then I, I was well, like looking at the definition. I was like, that seems like a word you would just use to describe somebody who's like quick. <laughs> That's person's full of legerity. Um, yeah, it's not a person who is physic. You know, has yeah. physical or uh, mental 
what is it? <laughs> <laughs> quickness. <laughs> quickness, yeah. Nimbleness. Agility. Nimbility. Uh, that man was full of legerity mm-hmm. in his loins. I always I feel like you wanted to, you would want to use it like, oh, that man's very legeric. Yeah. But I don't know if legeric's a word. I don't think you put an IC at the end of an ITY. I don't know. It's an interesting word. I just, it was a cool word. I've never heard it before. Is there a sentence there that it gives you? Uh, there's, ooh, there's one from uh, William Shakespeare's Henry V. Ah, hence why it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, let's see. The sentence is, Break up their drowsy grave and newly move with casted slow and fresh legerity. That does not fucking help explain that word at all. Fresh, <laughs> physical, and mental quickness? Mm-hmm. That doesn't make any sense. I think people give Shakespeare too much credit. <laughs> Yes. Um, well, there's a here's a sentence from John Updike's "Picked Up Pieces" from 1975. Oh, that 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 venerable kind of, that vener- oh Updike oh, that, that <laughs> venerable tone tome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nobokov's own tricky legerity discourages solemn praise. He makes his acolytes and exegetes seem ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, an it's adjective. Very weird. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, maybe that's a. I don't know. I'll I write. I'll write wrong. the dictionary people and be like. Yeah. Hey, uh, excuse me. Uh, I feel like what you have um, here is very <laughs> incorrect. Um, I just when I was reading and looking at the word legerity, I just assumed that it would be an, an adjective because yes. uh, it, it seems like something you would use to describe a particular uh, skill set that somebody might have. I yes. don't. I don't know. I'm just a, a humble ma- uh, peasant. I'm so sorry to bother you. It seems that your uh, definition is uh, lacking in clarity. Um, if you could just not maybe quote Shakespeare, th- we just live in a day and age where people don't really understand his language usage. Uh, so I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's your fault for looking up that word. Uh, yeah, I know. I just stumbled upon it. Um, so when I start talking in that voice, I just mm-hmm. start rambling. I yeah. think it's because you just expect somebody who talks like that it's to because just it ramble. never. It's it's like an uh, uh, it's like a rolling wheel voice. Like it just never stops. <laughs> Um, just, uh, I'm very easily intimidated, so I'm just going to keep talking to you, because uh, if I stop talking, then that will <laughs> open up the opportunity for you to punch me in the face. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but if I continue talking, I might be able to confuse you into possibly thinking that I had some nice to say, but you probably don't pay attention, and you're probably going to hit me anyway. Um, but, oh, look at the time. I got to go. No. <laughs> it's his little feet going over. <laughs> 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 what kind of just shoes walking, is he? What is walking, he walking no, on? No, it's just—it's like, like a cartoon. On? He's yeah. just like he's running off really quick without moving his <laughs> top part of his body. Uh, What's your welcome word? to <laughs> Fleeting Thought Podcast. Uh, my word is non sequitur, which is actually two words. Uh, I didn't realize that when I was looking it up. Um, and it's uh, spelled N O N space S E Q U I T U R. Oh. And I think it's French. Non sequitur. Non sequitur. Uh, non sequitur. Is that Bongate. somebody who no longer has a secretary? Mm hmm. Yeah. His disposal? Non. Uh, <laughs> I am currently non sequitur. <laughs> My secretary left. Ma. Uh, sir, I did not leave. You uh, forced me out <laughs> yes. of the office. <laughs> um, sir, you told me to leave hastily. Uh, with uh, legerity. Um, With great legerity, I fled the office yes. to escape the wrath of my friend's boss. <laughs> yes. He is now non <laughs> <laughs> Uh No. Okay, sorry. No. Shut ignore up. everything we just said. None of it holds true to the definition of non sequitur. You should probably ignore everything we said anyway. <laughs> um, it is a conclusion or statement that does not logically follow from the previous argument or statement. Uh, so essentially, something just interjected <laughs> that doesn't relate to what you were just talking about. Or so it's like a fancy way of changing the subject. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a, yeah, exactly. It's like you say it because, like, for some reason in your head, it just comes up, and and then you realize it's not. It doesn't refer to what you were just talking about. So you know, someone can just be like, "Well, that's a non sequitur. It doesn't follow from what we're talking about. You're just trying to distract from the situation." Um, that's what I would say. <laughs> is it? I was, yeah. I was trying to think if I knew Sounds anybody that when I was having a conversation with them and change the subject, mm-hmm. they would say it like that. Because I think it was like, don't change the subject. Yeah. Don't go non sequitur on me, you fucker. Um, that non sequitur really uh, broke the flow of the conversation. And, and I was really enjoying our conversation until you ruined it. With your superfluous non sequitur. I'll see your non sequitur and raise you a un sequitur. <laughs> a l- secretary. A re sequitur. 
I'll raise your uh, incumbent with a uh, comptroller. Oh, with the, what legerity you speak, sir. <laughs> yeah, yes, with the uh, um, nimble legerity. Uh, there's a stand-up comedian called Natasha Legero, oh. and uh, that uh, uh, has a similar pronunciation to Legerity. Uh, she's a lady. Oh, that was. I thought there was like a story relating. To, you were just stating no, the fact that there was, was a woman that exists who does stand-up comedy with that name. Yeah. Okay. It's a non sequitur. I thought like I feel like normally when you say there's this person such and such. But anyway, they have this bit, da 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 da. But that's not what you really kept you me were on my toes with that one. Some kind of fucking <laughs> continuity or like uh, relevance or other big words. I'm just gonna f- float in on here for no reason. <laughs> Welcome to the Fleety Thoughts Podcast with Joe Gray and Jenny Gordwall, brought to you by Anal Lube. Mr. Chunky, <laughs> Colonel Chunky, Anal Cream. He used to be Mister, but then he got promoted to Colonel. <laughs> He joined the military and produces and a cream for the troops. He made his way up through the ranks to Colonel, and now he's got a lube. Um, yeah. Uh, let's talk about The Witcher 3, Wild Cunt. Uh, it is a new title. Well, that's a different game than what I've been playing. You haven't been playing that game? I've been so playing like the X-rated yeah. pornographic version? Uh, no, it's more about the uh, ex-wife who fucking burns your house down. <laughs> uh, it's called <laughs> The Witcher Wild Cunt, and you uh, just run around um, protecting men from disgruntled ex-wives. Oh, I thought you were, yeah, I thought you played the wife. So you were running around just getting married to dudes and then no. burning their houses down. Just like in The Witcher, wow. Wild Hunt is a group of people attacking you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the Wild Cunt okay. is the one that's the bad I guy. You. I got you. Uh, but no, it is uh, Wild Hunt. Uh, it is not Wild Cunt, but that is my joke. It was, it was a good, very good one. Uh, I, uh, I laugh myself. It's very, very good. It took me a long time to think of. Uh, Just to change the one consonant. <laughs> yes. I changed the letter and changed the meaning. Too great <laughs> funniness. Hello. Hello, comedy. I know it. I know comedy when I say it. Because I tell you it's funny. And if you don't think it's funny, I'll shoot you in the face. I will chop your head off. Woo. Um, well, what are your yeah. thoughts? I haven't played a ton. I only played eh, like maybe three hours. Oh, no, really? I've just been working all week. Tomorrow's my f- day off, so that's like my day probably is just going to be playing The Witcher. Yeah. And editing my book a little bit. I'm so close to being done with it. Yeah, I know, be right? Done with it. You're gonna. You have your other books are on sale right now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can buy them for like ninety nine cents. That is not much. That's a McChicken. I know, isn't it? It's. Uh, I was thinking about it when I put them on sale the other day. I was like, uh, you know, I spent like eight months of my life working on this, and I'm just <laughs> fucking practically giving it away it's for like nothing. A penny an hour. Uh, of wow, that was really non sequitur of us to. We were talking about The Witcher, and then we, we weren't just, really talking well, about The no, Witcher. Well, we were gonna start. And we were then gonna it, start, it but I think your away. your your books are more important uh, than this yes. fucking game that somebody made. Um, but anyway, yeah, I like the game. It's good. It's fun. That's all I need to say. <laughs> I mean, it's like an RPG. It's, it's got an open world. There's stuff in it. I think that I was more excited about Bloodborne, but before it came out, and then it came out, and now I'm not that excited about it. And then this game, I wasn't that excited about, but now that I'm playing it, it's like very uh, engrossing and enthralling, mm-hmm. and uh, it's very intricate, and there, there's a ton of stuff to do. It's got a massive open-world map, and um, it looks good. It plays well. Um, it's got a couple funky little glitches, like where I'm locked onto a character, but my... but my main character is looking at the camera. He's like <laughs> looking the wrong way. He's not facing the bad guy. Um, and uh, a couple weird, you know, AI glitches, but uh, otherwise it's all par uh, it's for the course. Good. I feel like with open world games, I just expect yeah. like funky glitches. You can imagine with, you know, a billion lines of code every <laughs> once in a while, something's going to get a little funky there. Um, but yeah, I definitely uh, think people, I think it's going to be a huge hit. Like I think mm-hmm. in the next couple months, people are going to t- be talking about it a lot because you can everyone's going to have a unique experience with the game because you can do whatever you want um and it's got so much variety and so much uh customization and uh you know alchemy and uh potions and stuff and, mm-hmm. and weapon attachments and spells and all this fucking just a million different things you can do yeah. and uh you're always progressing in the game and and finding new stuff so 
I think it'll keep people busy for a long time. And it's an, a single player only, so nobody gets to fucking sit there and complain about the online stuff. Yeah, I'm not working you're or just, whatever. You're going to have your experience, kind of like Skyrim, and you're going to talk about it you know, with people, and they're going to be like, oh, you got to do this, and you got to do this, and it's kind of got that Dark Souls water cooler kind of uh, mm-hmm. uh, feel to it, so... Uh, I'm just I just think it's good and I think people should go check it out. Yeah. I um I never played the first Witcher game. I played the second one on the three sixty. Um but I was I always been really excited about this since they announced it because I was I loved the the Witcher two is such a it wasn't open world like this one. Um like you had areas you explored but they were a lot smaller and they kinda had paths that you followed. Um like it wasn't super linear but it like you, you never could really wander around too much. Um so this one, this one, they just went like went crazy open world. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like how they did with Dragon Age. Like the first two Dragon Age games were like they were open, but like the areas were pretty contained. And then Inquisition came out, and they're just like, "Fuck it, here's this yeah, crazy yeah. thing that you can explore now." Yeah. Um. And so this one's kind of like that, and it it's kind of like the game that I'm mo- like I've gotten so addicted to since Dragon Age. Like I had a ton of fun with Bloodborne and Dark Souls, but I finished them like pretty quickly. Whereas Dragon Age, I put like a hundred hours into it, and I feel like The Witcher is probably gonna be pretty similar, yeah. like time frame, um, for how much time I put into it. Yeah, I can't imagine how long it must have took them to make it, only because of the storyline. Mm-hmm. Like, you, I mean, there's intricate storylines just for side missions. Yeah, you know, with voice acting and, um, and cutscenes and things, and then there's the main stuff, and that's all got cutscenes and. And there are multiple different, I mean, there's like 30 different endings, but there's also a million different like decisions to be mm-hmm. made. And uh, it reminds me of uh, Mass Effect. Um, oh, yeah. Because you have these, you're like creating relationships with other characters um, that progress and are persistent throughout the game. Um, so you can be like, you can tell someone to fuck off or you can like be their best friend. Mm-hmm. Like, and that is going to affect the rest of the game, which means that they have to have multiple storylines um, built into the game so that when you make decisions, you know, the voice acting for one situation wouldn't work in another situation. Yeah. So I, I just, it, you can tell that they really care about their game um, and put a lot into it. And, you know, they give you a bunch of stuff with the standard version of the game. And, you know, there's a strat guide and there's two different strat guides and there's season pass. And then there's 16 DLCs that you get for free just because they love their, their yeah. customers. So I think they're doing a good job in, uh, promoting their brand, um, which just means the next thing they do, people are gonna, you know, be excited mm-hmm. about. So, and even like the expansion pack is substantial. Like the the two yeah. expansions are like yeah. really big pieces. It mm-hmm. reminds me of um, like when expansion packs were like a thing, you know, like fifteen years ago, where and it was mostly with just computer games that would do like the like expansions discs or whatever mm-hmm. but that, like back then that was when you paid like $30 and got like almost like a second game it was almost like a sequel just not quite as much content yeah. whereas now DLC is like oh it's 5 bucks for like uh, this outfit and mm-hmm. you get this one little extra mission to do that takes like 20 minutes to get it's just like little little like um, piecemeal things yeah. where I, I I like that with this they're just like there's two expansions coming out this one's like 20 hours long with this whole new storyline this one's like 10 hours with this storyline and it's like 25 bucks and like I'm probably gonna buy it if I'm still playing it by the time the first one comes out um, yeah I don't know I mean it just depends on how many other fucking games come out this year that I want to yeah. try to play so yeah, I think E3 is in what June? Yeah, June. I know, like June, Sony's like conference is uh, Sony's is I think June fifteenth. Okay, at, like yeah. six o'clock. So it's usually the first or second week of June that they do E3. We'll see. And then uh, Bethesda's doing a conference this year for the first time, inevitably to reveal Fallout Four and Dishonored, and uh, that's what we're hoping. Yeah, um, Doom Four. They already said it's going to be there. Yeah, um, or I don't think it's Doom. 4. I think it's just called Doom. It's like a reboot now. Um, which I was reading, like they were like there's some people who already got like hands on time with it, and they were talking about how it's uh it's like a cross between the old school shooters where like you don't really ever take cover, you're just like running around all the time, just mm-hmm. shooting and all this crazy shit. Um, but you can like there's like parkour movement in the new Doom game and huh. stuff, where, like where you can slide under things and vault over stuff. And wow, um, I think it's gonna be really good. They've been working on it for probably yeah. a pretty long time. So yeah, I think those remakes are weird because. Video gaming has come such a long way that I don't like 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 Dying Light had parkour mm-hmm. and they did a really good job with their parkour. So it's kind of like a 
like part you know when you add really new elements to mm-hmm. a really old game it doesn't always work out very yeah. well um but the old versions are tend to be so uh limiting and so you know old school that we don't they don't necessarily get in, you know i don't get engaged with them because mm-hmm. like a game like witcher is so you know they're just throwing so much at you yeah which is you couldn't do you know 10 years ago or 5 years ago or whatever mm-hmm. when they were starting out so but uh, yeah, video games are uh, they're a thing. They're, they're a, a thing. form of entertainment. They're, uh, they're important. Like the fastest growing form of entertainment. I think it's like bigger than Hollywood now, as far really? as like the amount of money that it makes every year. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah. Welcome to Fleeting Thought <laughs> Podcast, where we're just about to wrap up. Uh, wrap in conclude, wrap up, wrap up, wrap up, wrap oh, up. Okay. wrap it up, wrapper. Okay. Uh, the wrapper, the raptor, Parappa the rapper, Parappa the rapper. Let's uh let's do this. <laughs> let's get started. Let's just start <laughs> let's, over. Let's, let's, let's yeah, get, no, just delete okay, it. I don't, I don't like this episode. It's gross. Yeah, let's just. This is fucking Colonel Chunky's anal cream. What were we thinking? I know, it's so dumb. <laughs> what were you thinking? You fucking know. thought of it. It's not my fault. I think it's I just have all a whole knowledge. wall in my store dedicated to various sexual assortmented items. Mm-hmm. Sexual assortments. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I need to stop by your store and get some of that sexual <laughs> stuff. Need a flashlight or something? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna buy one for each day of the week. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. So I can Just uh, run them through your dishwasher. Really, the the week. really. F- I don't have a dishwasher, so it'll all be ha- by hand, <laughs> which is the way I like to clean my fake vaginas. Um, you you're know. gonna get different ones. Like, oh, this is an Asian one. Yeah. That's nice. Oh yeah, I gotta mix it up. Mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to recreate Ex Machina, but with re- like no money. <laughs> so I just need fake vaginers. Vaginers. Um, okay. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, I realize this podcast uh, episode was weird, and I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, it, it was about as weird as usual. Most of the other ones. <laughs> well, I had fun. A little bit more focused. Yeah. But still pretty fucking weird. Super focused. I think if people are still listening to us at this point, the, mm-hmm. this far end, they mm-hmm. just—it's not that weird anymore. They're just sort of zoning out, like in their car. <laughs> like, oh, they're doing the weird voices and talking about yeah. butt sex again. Okay, uh, okay. It's whatever. One it's of those. One of those guys, episodes. Right? Yeah. I was really hoping for uh, an intimate look at the police brutality <laughs> yeah, rates in America, yeah. but yeah. no, you guys opted for anal cream. Instead. Yeah, yeah. There's like important <laughs> shit going on in the world. Hey, I got an idea. We'll end with this. Don't spank your kids. Yeah, don't. Don't get divorced. Take your time. Find a good mate before you fucking start mating. Have those really serious conversations. You know, really explore your goals mm-hmm. for life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, when it comes to raising your kid, don't hit them. You know, just look them. Get on their <laughs> get down on their level. Look them in the eye and be like, "What's bothering you, buddy?" Well, you don't have to pretend like they're glass, but yeah, no, yeah. I'm being serious. Ask them questions. Open-ended questions. Find out how they feel. Just be honest. First, figure out yourself, and then figure out what you want to do with your life. And then if you have kids, do some research. Mm -hmm. Figure out the best thing. If they haven't developed empathy by the time they're five, then it's your duty to kill them. (laughs) (laughs) Because you failed. It's your duty to kill yourself and maybe put the kid up for adoption. (laughs) You suck. Uh, And uh, didn't spend enough time with them, like holding them. Hold your fucking babies. Mm-hmm. They need touching it's okay and eye for them contact. To cry. It's okay for you to cry. Every, everyone should be crying. Cry. Just Everybody just cry a lot. Actually, when you're done listening to this, just cry. Just think of the most sad yeah. thing you can and yeah. just like, cry. Think about how you've repressed all those feelings for so long and then uh, fucking let them out. Maybe you don't have children right now and maybe you should think about why that is and then maybe that'll make you cry. Maybe you realize that Part of your body doesn't work properly wow. or wow. nobody really loves a, you that much. It's a very or, specific subset of know. people that can't have babies and you want them to cry about <laughs> it. They can still adopt. It's okay. Oh, it's true. Um, um, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's end this before it, I, it gets really depressing. We alienate like, anybody else. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, thanks for listening and we love you and uh, uh, fuck you. Good night. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> we both love and hate you. And, uh, peace, deuces.